السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد My dear viewers welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Huda uh, Today's episode is on the 29th of the blessed month of Ramadan One more to go inshallah azajal May Allah accept from all of us May Allah forgive us all our sins. Amen. Uh, yesterday we had um, a few questions, pending questions. So let me remind you with our phone numbers first. Then inshallah we'll go straight to answer uh, the pending questions and take some more uh, live calls inshallah. Our phone number is area code 002 then 0238 or 132. Uh, the question we have was from Umar from Nigeria. He said, I heard that leaving your hands straight while standing in the prayer takes away from the reward because the person will not be following the Prophet Sunnah and, and it will invalidate the prayer if you, uh, if you let your hands go. First of all, the vast majority of the Muslim scholars and at Tabi'een and Al Fuqaha are of the view that. Uh, whenever in the prayer that should we should place the right hand on the left hand on the chest there is a slight difference between the scholars with regards to where to place them but the vast majority of them are in agreement that you should place the right on top of the left whether right on your chest or between the chest and the navel or according to Abu Hanifa may Allah have mercy on him uh, beneath the navel and the more right view is on the chest of course there are many a hadith narrated in this regard uh, for instance Sahl ibn Sa'd may Allah be pleased with him narrated the hadith in which he described the prophet's prayer and that they used to place the right on the left not to let go their hands there is another hadith narrated by Wa'il ibn Hujr may Allah be pleased with him he is narrating his own observation of how the Prophet ﷺ prayed after making takbir, then he placed the right on the left on his chest. ﷺ. So the hadith of Fa'il ibn Hujr is collected by Al Imam Muslim. It's a, it's a sound hadith. He said he raised his hands parallel to his ears, then after he made takbir, When we have more than one hadith, and the vast majority of the fuqaha are in agreement that we should place the right on the left in the prayer, then that is sufficient as a reference. But when somebody says, but Imam Malik, for instance, uh, uh, used to let go his hands, this is a view which is doubted for many reasons because it has been also reported that Imam Malik, as in his muwatta, that said it is the sunnah to place the right on the left on your chest in the prayer. So it has been narrated the opposite from uh, Imam Malik. There is also um, Imam Malik, it has been narrated that he said, may Allah have mercy on him, that if the person is tired of the long standing, so he is allowed to let go his hands in the nafilah, not in the fard prayer. Otherwise, it is a sunnah to place the right on the left in the fard prayer. It is obvious that in the Ibadi sect that they do not place the right on the left on the, their chest or their stomach in the prayer whatsoever. That's why you see them all, uh, all, always letting go their hands. So the Sunnah as has been narrated by many companions in the sound hadith to place your right hand on the left one in the prayer closer to your chest. May Allah the Almighty guide us to what is best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tasneem from Alaykum Oman. Assalamu alaikum, sister Tasneem, and welcome to the Alaykum program. Salam. How are you, Sheikh? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Uh, 
and Jazakallah Karen for all your help to all of us. Ameen, Ameen. May Allah accept from all of us. Thank you, Sister Tasneem. Uh, Sheikh, I had asked you a question a few days back. I think you missed my question. You mean about autism? <laughs> no, it was about uh, clinical hypnotherapy. Uh, about? I'm sorry? Clinical hypnotherapy. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's so right. Uh, okay, I got your question. Okay. And uh, can I please ask an... Uh, Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, no, Sister Tasneem, we cannot hear a word from you. Can you hear me? No, no, we cannot hear you. Okay, we'll be more than happy, inshallah, to take your call if you call back. Please try again. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sam from the United States. Assalamu alaikum, Sam. Doing. Yes, Sam. Salam alaikum. Um, so I just had a quick question regarding uh, kaza, regarding shaving the side of the head and keeping the front of the keeping the top of the head thick. So I was wondering, in terms of like modern hairstyles, like some people have part of the side of the head shaved a little bit, uh, but more than the top of the head. So is that forbidden in Islam? Is that something just makru? Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to get some clarification on that. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sam. Got your question. Okay. Uh, do you have another one? Sam? Okay. Uh, what, what you said is so right. The Prophet Sallallahu uh, which is basically al -qaza is to uh, shave some parts of the head and leave the rest. So as it is nowadays, and it has been a fashion, um, you know, some times ago, to shave for instance the sides and leave like um, a mushroom head that is not permissible when you said also with regards to the fashion as you understand that we are not supposed to imitate a, a fashion which is uh, you know developed by non-muslims we're not supposed to imitate that neither in the outfit or in the behavior so we're supposed rather to uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you should not be like a tail. You follow people in whatever they do, whether right or wrong. You should rather only do what is right, uh, even if they do what is wrong. Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, Sister Tasneem is back on the line. Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, this is Tasneem from KSA. Uh, brother Tasneem, Assalamu Alaikum from the KSA. Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, I have a question that uh, if a person is fasting and he went on a journey, but uh, he then resolved to not fast. But he could not fight and find anything to eat, and he continued to fast. Mm. Is it valid or not? He intended not to fast, right? Yeah. Then he is not fasting. Yeah, he intended not to fast. Yes, uh, the answer is, if he intended to break his fast, then he is not fasting. He has to make up that day. Has he to give any fidya? Why? He is on a journey. If he's in has a journey, he he's allowed not to fast. He has to make up that day. Has to give fidya also or not? No. Al fidya, okay. as Allah Almighty says in 184 of Surah Al Baqarah, وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين. You're talking about people who cannot fast. They will not be able to fast in the future. So fasting is not in their record. Accordingly, to make up the missed days of fasting during Ramadan is to feed per each day a miskin. But this person was on a journey, was traveling, so he intended to break his fast. He looked for anything to break his fast, but he didn't. But because of his intention that he's not fasting anymore. So what does he have to do? Well, the same ayah says, Marda these are the two concessions. If you're sick or if you're traveling, or in the same ayah, So, which means how many days you skip because of your journey? I was traveling for three days. Okay? 
you're allowed if you cannot fast you're allowed to break your fast and then later on when you return or when you reside anywhere after Ramadan you should make up those days without any fidya though Salman from the KSA Assalamu alaikum my dear brother Salman welcome to the program Salam Allah Sheikh how are you fine Alhamdulillah thank you for asking first of all I want to ask about your mother I hope she's doing fine uh, Allahun Musta'an Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal Keep praying for her Please convey my regard From my mother to your mother Yes sure inshallah I will That will be very pleasant Inshallah I'm sorry I'm a bit overwhelmed I mean my, my voice is a bit shaky actually I just want to grab the opportunity of Ramadan Based on Huda TV network actually Okay I the reason I want to call you is just for dua, okay? I I have been oppressed by my sponsor. It is more than three years. I filed case in the labor office. I took all the legal means mm. because I fear Allah. Mm. Okay, I did not took any easy steps. Anyway, I follow the legal procedures. It is more than three years. Now. Allah it Allah is Allah almost Allah. three years now. Allah Thirty-two Allah. months exactly. Yeah. I'm without salary, even... Wallahi, Akhi, Salman, I feel you. May Allah the Almighty make it easy for you. And definitely justice will prevail. Uh, I hope that uh, either the, your sponsor or any of those whom they know that a sponsor like him, not necessarily him, in a similar condition, remind them to fear Allah the Almighty. And just remind them that they are really being the worst representatives, not just of Islam, of their culture, of their traditions, because justice is something that Allah has ordained upon himself before ordaining upon his servants. And it's opposite. He has forbidden it upon himself before forbidding it on others. In the hadith, Allah the Almighty says, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu al-dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tawalamu. O oh my servants, I have forbidden myself against zulm, injustice. And I have made injustice forbidden amongst you. You should not wrong one another. You should not deal unjustly with each other. Sometimes when the person have the power and have the means, he assumes that he can get away with his crime. No, no, no. Allah the Almighty reminded us, لا تحسبن الله غافلا عما يعمل الظالمون. Allah is not unaware of what the wrongdoers and the oppressors do. He's only giving them a respite. And in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيُمْلِي لِلظَّالِمْ حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَهُ لَمْ يُفْلِتْ Allah the Almighty indeed gives respite to the wrongdoer, to the oppressor. Hopefully he will repent, he will recognize his faults, he will return back what he has taken without right from people. He would reconcile with those whom he have oppressed and beg them to pardon him and forgive him. But if he doesn't do that, حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَهُ لَمْ يُفْلِتْ Then whenever Allah gives him all the opportunities, he seizes him. Whenever he seizes him, he can never escape his punishment. He can never escape his punishment, especially if the oppression is concerning an, uh, an, an employee's uh, property, or right, or wages. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَعْطُوا الْأَجِيرَ أَجْرَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَجِفَّ عَرَقُهُ You should give the employee their wages before the sweat dry up. If you don't do that, and if you devour the wealth of those who are working for you, and you deny their rights, then you will definitely have a terrible fate. Not only in the hereafter, maybe you're negligent of that, but in this life, your business will be ruined, 
Your children, you will see them devastated before your eyes because you've been feeding them from haram. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companions 1400 years ago, Ikhwanukum khawalukum. Your servants are just like your brothers. Are but your brothers. So if any of you happen to have a servant, a maid, an employee, you should understand that he is your brother, she is your sister. Allah the Almighty entrusted you to look after them by making them under your guardianship, under your command. So the Prophet said, فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ You should never ever look at your worker, your employee, or your servant, or your maid, or back then during slavery. You should never look at them as your own property, your own position. They are human beings like you, not just like you. The Prophet said, they are your brothers, but your brothers. فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ فَلْيُطْعِمْهُ مِمَّا يَطْعَمْ if Allah the Almighty made you superior in power, in business, in wealth, in sponsorship, so that you recruited people to work for you. Those people are your brothers, if you believe in Allah and in the last day. If you truly believe in Allah, you should feed them from whatever you eat. You should clothe them from whatever you wear. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, I have seen that by my own eyes. I have seen some very wealthy people in, from Mecca, MashaAllah. I have been invited a few times. Whenever the food is served, as once they invited me for food, the drivers, the servants, the people who are serving, because this is a very wealthy man, were all invited not to take the leftover. They sat with us on the same table. They sat with us and they ate with us. This is how Islam teaches us to treat those who are working for us. They may be inferior in wealth, but before Allah the Almighty, maybe they are superior to you. So you never know. Maybe a dua from an employee like that, and instead of praying against you, he could pray for you, for your blessings, to bless you, bless your family, bless your wealth, so that you will prosper in both lives. But if you continue to oppress him, then I would like to tell our brother who has been oppressed, if this is the case, rejoice. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, there are three supplications, three invocations, which will never be rejected. And he counted one of them is the da'wah, the prayer of one who has been oppressed. Allah the Almighty addresses his supplication saying, I swear to my honor and majesty, I shall answer you, I shall support you, I shall give you victory even after a while. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Asya from the KSA. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa Allah give shifa to your mommy. Ameen. And, um, Ameen. and give a lot of ajar. Whatever you are doing, your good deeds and the ajar goes to your mommy Ameen. and your daddy. Ameen. I mean, thank you, Sister Asya. May Allah bless you and your family. What a beautiful dua. Thank you so much. Amen. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh, I have one question. It is very sad to know some countries, they are celebrating Eid tomorrow. And that is fixed, it seems. And they are calculating on the some calculation and they have fixed it. Though Saudi Arabia has declared that maybe it will be on uh, Wednesday, but they have said that you can see the moon on t uh, today itself also. If you see, the, it, it may be tomorrow also. Mm -hmm. But they say that they have the view of uh, Wednesday Eid also. Mm -hmm. But uh, just uh, saying that, okay, it is fixed for tomorrow and they go on cal calculation. Uh, if such countries uh, uh, take such uh, situations, uh, I mean, such steps, sorry, so well, those who are people who are staying there, uh, I mean, what uh, they should do, they will be sinful for that because they cannot do, they don't have that, uh, that power in the hand. Mm. So what is, what is the situation in this uh, time? Okay, Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Sister Asya. Barakallahu fiki. The Prophet... Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
سعيد السلام عليكم اخي سعيد وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم تو ذا بروجرام جو اهيد ثانك يو ثانك يو سو ماتش جزاكم فور فور انسرينج اون ذا كويشن وجزاكم اند اي هاد اسك يو بوت فور دايز اجو ما شاء الله الحمد لله يو اسك يو 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 ريسبوندد فيري ويل تو ماي كويشن اون ذا كار اون ذا اون ماشينريز ناو اي هاف اي هاف ان اكستنشن تو ذات كويشن ويتش از سمثينج ريليتد تو ذات Like uh, you, 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 you replied by saying that you have to give uh, the cut on uh, the selling price. Now the selling price of machinery normally is uh, it fluctuates. It could be up, it could be down. Mm. So I'm presuming that, uh, when uh, we, when we're giving the cut, you you, you 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 try to estimate. So after estimating, then the final uh, final year you sell the machinery, for example, because it, it takes two to three years or four years, whatever. Now when you come to to, to get the real figure by selling the machine. Uh, is it allowed to adjust the the zakat? For example, if you have overpaid or if you have underpaid, or uh, once you have given, there's nothing like adjustment. I my, my I I cannot really imagine nor perceive what you mean by adjust the zakat rate after you pay the machinery. Yeah. I, well, I don't I'm get. Not it. adjusting the rate. As in, for example, I paid my machinery on one million. The zakat is based on one million selling price, mm. but when you come to sell the machinery in the, at the end of the two years, you sell it for uh, for eight hundred thousand. So it means the first year you paid the zakat on one million, and the final. Uh... I guess I got your co uh, you, your point. Yeah. Okay. Next, السلام عليكم. Brother Farhan from the KSA. السلام عليكم. السلام عليكم شيف. وعليك. I have I have two questions, شيف. The first one is regarding the six days of fasting during Shawwal. Do we have to fast for six any six days in the month, or should it be على طول after after Eid? على طول. Okay. Uh, and my second question is, uh, what is the status of suicide in Islam? Okay. Thank you so much, Jazakallah. Uh, Sister Aisha from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Aisha. Go ahead. Uh, I want to know can I can I take uh, an injection while fasting? What kind of injection? It's antibiotic. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Thank okay. you. You want? I also have another question, please. No. Uh, I want to know if someone should like uh, divorce his wife in rage, mm. so, and he said it three times at one sitting. Is that divorce? Is that a valid divorce and is it counted as three or one? Okay. Well, basically the way you're asking the question is like suggesting the answer as well. Like when you say enrage. But it's hard for a person like me to measure or to evaluate the rage. What kind of anger was the person who said to his wife while angry, you're divorced, you're divorced, you're divorced. Was really angry or it was a moderate anger. Like, you know, there was a conversation. It was not really a big fight. So some of the scholars suggested that anger which would nullify divorce is when the person enters into the condition of ighlaq, as the hadith says. Ighlaq, which is like his mind is not functioning anymore. He doesn't know what he's saying. So once he says it, his wife says, oh, what did you just say? I don't know. I, I didn't realize what I was saying. Okay, he doesn't know whether he said divorce to his wife or to his sister or to his wa uh, mother because he's in a state of ighlaq, okay, in a state of confusion. But, you know, when somebody goes home and he asks his wife for food and she said, give me another 30 minutes. So he gets angry. This is not the anger which really makes his divorce nullified. So they pick up a fight and say, okay, you're divorced. Go to your wife. That's a valid divorce. And he's responsible for it. 
But as far as whether it counts as one or three, we said before that, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, and Ibn, uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim, and many others, it counts as only one divorce. While according to Al-Jumhur, it counts as many times as the person said. If the person said three times, it's your call. Allah the Almighty give you the power of filing, of giving divorce once at a time. Or if you're going to consume the three times all at once as Umar ibn Khattab judged, it's your problem. Allah the Almighty said, At-talaqu marratan fa-imsakum bima'rufin al-tasrihum bi-ihsan. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Mustafa from Sudan. Muhammad Salah, how is it? Yeah, Mustafa, uh, how are you? you uh, I'm there. How are you? Mustafa. Akhi, next time buy a good phone card, okay? Okay, no problem. Or pass on your number, we'll be happy to give you a call. Uh, brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. This is Mamdouh Muhammad, and I'd like to remind you that we are humans, and humans err and make mistakes. If you think that you make mistakes, if you think that you have sins, if you want your sins to be erased, and I'm sure that everybody wants, this is the golden opportunity. Join me in the month of Ramadan at this program, The Oasis of Ramadan at Huda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, Sister Tasneem who have asked earlier about um, uh, hypnosis and hypnotism. Uh, you know that is something really needs to be discussed with uh, scientists as well because it's easy to say that hypnosis is haram because of the utilization of the jinn. Well it is understood that hypnosis also involves the utilization of the jinn in some kinds of hypnotism but not in all so i don't want to generalize hypnosis is a state of deep relaxation just short of sleep or deep sleep um, you know it is defined by physicians also as 
a state of physical relaxation accompanied and uh, induced by mental concentration. So if this is by the use of drugs for the reason of treatment, that is possible. And whatever physicians think in this case, based on the, in the case of the patient, that is permissible. But anything that involves the utilization of the gen or the assistance of the gen, because even before scientists came to know hypnotism, it was known the magnetic hypnotism through the, the utilization of the gen. This sort of hypnosis is absolutely forbidden, and you're not, un, you're not allowed to undergo any treatment that involves this kind of hypnosis. If the psychiatrist or the psychologist has to use certain uh, drugs in order to put the uh, patient to sleep or in order to put him into uh, the condition of mental concentration, which does not involve the gen, this is some sort of treatment. So I cannot generalize sister testing. Okay, barakallahu feek. Uh, sister Asya from the case A, she asked a very uh, important question. It's about the countries which already declare that uh, tomorrow is uh, Eid. Based on what? Based on previous calculation. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Sumu li ru'yatih wa aftiru li ru'yatih. The determining fact which decides for Muslims when to begin fasting and when to begin the Eid is citing the moon, the hilal, لرؤيته upon seeing it. Sometimes, whenever it is cloudy and the weather is not clear, and based on the fact that, for instance, the month is already now 30, so it is announced uh, that tomorrow we will have to fast because that month can never be more than one, more than 30. But when the sky is clear and without making any effort, because sighting the moon is an act of worship to decide whether tomorrow is Ramadan or tomorrow is Eid, this is a ibadah. Because it decides the beginning of a fard, a farida, a ibadah. Fasting on the Eid day is haram. And breaking your fast on any day of Ramadan is absolutely haram. So this is citing the crescent, al hilal, in order to determine whether to fast or not to fast is an act of worship. It should not be left merely or simply to mere calculations. We've done that in the States, and sometimes uh, the organizations would announce based on NASA's calculation that the Eid is tomorrow, subhanAllah. Or sometimes they will decide that the Eid is day after tomorrow. And when the sky is clear, you get to see the crescent. Once you see the crescent, it's over. Don't tell me calculations. It's Eid tomorrow. And the problem is with the inmates. I was a chaplain for the US prisons for, for more than a decade. So it was a problem. When you tell the inmates beforehand that tomorrow is Eid, and it is not. Or you tell them that Eid is day after tomorrow. And then when we get to see the Hilal and we announce that Eid is tomorrow and those people are left alone fasting on the Eid day. It is best to say based on the assisting calculations most likely. Look what you said. You said that in, in the country that you live in, in the KSA they said maybe Eid will be on Wednesday because it will not be possible to see the crescent. But we will go to cite it. So if they cite it, they will say tomorrow is Eid. This is the proper way. This is the proper way. Uh, ordinary people and laymen who follow their government and their leaders and their religious leaders in, in this matter, they are not blameworthy whatsoever. All the blame is cast on those who are in charge of making the decision. SubhanAllah. That's why Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, refused the offer of the Khalifa to make him the chief judge. He said, no way. And he was home arrest. He was beaten. And he was banned from giving the dars. Why? 
Not because they wanted him not to speak. No, because they wanted him to be the chief judge. He refused. Sufyan al-Thawri, likewise, he said, such a big responsibility. And when uh, the Khalifa insisted, he pretended that he's insane. So the Khalifa said to him that, I know that you're lying. He said, yeah, Amir al muminin And how could you choose a liar to be the chief judge? And he skipped. He ran off. He ran off from a position which people now change their deen. They betrayed the trust of Allah the Almighty to get this position. And once they get this position, they're ready to fabricate anything and issue any verdict. It's a big responsibility. So the laymen are not responsible. You're told that tomorrow is Eid, Alhamdulillah. Celebrate Eid and uh, it is the problem of the authorities who either really made it deliberately or made ishtihad and their ishtihad was wrong. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Brother Muhammad from Morocco. Uh, yes, I'm from Morocco, Sheikh. And you sound like yes. fasting too. Yes, Sheikh. Uh, one question, Sheikh. Naam. Zakat al-Fitr, how money is uh, give in? Uh, okay, I got your question. You really sound like you're fasting, Muhammad. Okay. Okay, uh, Um Saud from Kenya. Yes, please. Um Saud, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, my question is uh, can uh, zakat be in form of uh, machinery? Like to give someone machinery to, uh, to, to continue your business instead of giving in form of cash? Mm. Okay. Can it be done that way? No. Uh, if you. Zakah is due on your wealth and your positions. It must be paid in cash. Okay? Okay. Not okay. in machinery. Thank you, Sister Um Saud. Okay. Uh, Brother Muhammad from Morocco, Zakatul Fitr, he said how much? Zakatul Fitr is fixed, which is have, uh, I'm sorry, which is one saw for each family member. If you are the family father, if you are the guardian, then you pay Zakatul Fitr for yourself and all of those who are living under your roof, your children, your wife, and uh, <clears throat> you pay one saw of food, one saw of rice, one saw of uh, raisin, one saw of date, one saw of barley. What is a saw? A saw is a measure. And if it is a measure, then the way will differ from one item to another because one saw of rice will weigh more than one saw of dates. So that's why it's approximately between 2.5 to 3 kilogram of food. If you give it a 3 kilogram, you are in the safe side for each person. There are many people who are allowed to give the value, such as Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him. While the vast majority of the fuqaha, al-Shafi'i wa Ahmad wa Malik and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, are of the view that you should stick to the items and the way and the format which is prescribed by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Food. Okay. So if you have six family members, you, your wife, and four kids, times two point five or times three, that is 18 kilogram of rice, for instance. According to the vast majority of the fuqaha, you take the 18 kilogram of rice and give them to, either give them all to one poor family or split them between a couple or more people. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, you'll go to the market and ask how much is a one kilo uh, gram of rice? Uh, it was 10. So 10 times three, or times 2.5, that's 25, times 6, and this is how much you will have to pay. When you ask me my opinion with regards to paying the value, I say the Prophet ﷺ paid it on fo uh, in the form of food, and he was pretty much capable to give it in cash. Later on, after his death, وسلم, the companions likewise, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, could have given it in cash. 
But look, within the same minute, two questions were asked. Muhammad is asking about the value, how much money should we give zakat al fitr instead of the food? And then Umm Saud asked, can we give zakat on wealth, which is supposed to be paid in cash in the form of a machinery, in the form of goods, in the form of whatever? There is zakat on wealth, which is to be paid in cash. And there is zakat, zakat al fitr to be paid in the form of food. And there is zakat on crops to be paid from the same crops, from whatever you uh, harvest. There is zakat on livestock, likewise. So I presented the two views and I suggested what I believe and Allah knows best is more right, which is to give it as the Prophet said. If some people follow the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, may Allah accept from them. Um, Brother Saeed from United Arab Emirates asked about zakah on machinery and estimating the value of the machine uh, that he possesses. Let's say that's 800,000 dirham or a million dirham. Then when he came to sell it, he sold it for less or more. You're not blameworthy if it is more. And if it is less, you don't take money back from the zakah because it is paid on the value of the item at this moment. You ask in the market, and this is your business, you're selling vehicles. What is the tag price for these vehicles? Or for these vehicles, if there are many in your car lot, you own them, you possess them, you're not selling them for somebody else. So this is your own property, that's an investment. Each item worth that much. You pay zakah on the retail sale. Let's say that, subhanAllah, uh, a month later, the prices were risen. So the 800,000 became a million per each item. Enjoy it. You don't have to pay any zakah because there is no pending zakah. You paid on the current value. And if the, value, if the value is reduced, <coughs> you don't go back to deduct from the zakah because it's already paid. How would you deduct it? Do you intend to deduct it from the future zakah? No, you can't do that. Sister Farhana uh, from the case A had two questions. The first is about uh, fasting the six days of shawwal. Does it have to be ala tool immediately after Ramadan is over? No. The hadith says, ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَهُ بِسِتٍ مِنْ شَوَّالٍ You have the entire month of Shawwal. You choose any six days you like. Okay. This is the understanding of the hadith. What is the preference? The preference when you read the Quran, Allah the Almighty says, وَسَارِعُوا He says, سَابِقُوا He said, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ there is always a command of uh, hasting to do what is good, to fulfill what Allah the Almighty has either ordered you to do or recommended you to do. Especially when the Prophet Sallallahu says, seize the opportunity of five before you are being caught up by five. Seize the opportunity of your health before you fall ill. In the beginning of Shawwal, I'm healthy, alhamdulillah. <coughs> and I'm capable to fast. Begin fasting right away. There is no blame upon you if you decide to scatter them. Second day of Shawwal, because you cannot fast on the first, it's Saeed day, haram. You fast on the second day, then on the 10th, then on the 15th, then on the 20th, then on the 29th, that's permissible. But what is recommended is to hasten to do what is good. Does it have to be consecutive? No, it doesn't have to be consecutive. What does Islam say about suicide? That was Farhana's second question. Islam equates suicide to disbelief. And there is no other sin which was threatened with abiding eternally in hell, as in the hadith, besides associating partners to Allah in worship other than committing suicide. 
taken one's own life. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the hadith, whoever <coughs> stabs himself, bi hadida, any metal, any piece of iron, steel, knife, sharp blade, so he stabbed himself with the intention of taking his life. فَحَدِيدَتُهُ فِي يَدِهِ So the same tool that he took his life with in this life, he will have it in his hand. May Allah protect us against that. May Allah protect our children, our loved ones, and the entire Muslim Ummah, Ya Rabbi, against that. He will hold the same <coughs> instrument. Ya ta'anu biha. He will continue to stab himself. فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدًا فِيهَا مُخَلَّدًا أَبَدًا he will continue to stab himself to death in hellfire, eternally, forever, abiding therein forever. وَمَنْ تَحَسَّى سُمَّنْ فَسُمُّهُ فِي يَدِهِ Somebody deliberately overdosed himself, drank anything which is poisonous with the intention or injection or any form of intoxicant in order to take his or her life. They will continue to do the same in hell forever, eternally abiding therein. May Allah protect us against that. And every time they experience the death rattle and the suffering moments of death, then they die. Allah the Almighty will bring them back to life so that they will take their lives over and over and over and over eternally in hellfire. Who would think about suicide after world but an insane person? Hmm? who would think of taking his own life or the life of any other person but either crazy person or somebody who lost hope in Allah the Almighty that's why the hadith says he rushed he is not happy with my decree he rushed to come to me if the person who committed suicide did not commit suicide, he would have died on the same moment because this is his fixed term. But he decided to do it in an illegal way. You do not take your life. You do not take the life of others. Rather, you should have full hope in Allah the Almighty. وَمَنْ يَقْنَطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّهِ And who despairs of the mercy of his Lord? But the stray people, but those who went astray, but the non-believers, the believers perceive the calamities that they pass by and they experience as means of tests and trials in order to verify them, to verify their faith and to purify them from their sins and in order to raise them into higher ranks. May Allah keep us all steadfast. Aqulu qawli hadha. وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Hopefully happy Eid to all of you brothers and sisters May Allah accept from all of us والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your